Now talking about the longer LK5, it is a affordable large format 3D printer without a whole lot of bells and whistles. Although one of the coolest things about it, the user interface is, well, it's kind of familiar. It looks a lot like the user interface on a Raze 3D printer. However, it's not the user interface on a Raze. The Raze 3D printer's user interface runs on Windows. This definitely does not, but they were definitely cribbing notes from the Raze 3D printer. And for whatever reason, them looking at a superior user interface and going, I want to copy what it does, created a pretty decent user interface on the longer LK5 Pro. However, whenever you have a 3D printer of this price, there's going to be a lot of things about it that you're not gonna like as well. And for sure, there's a lot of things about this 3D printer that I wish were better. This build plate, I couldn't get anything to stick to it until I absolutely doused it with hairspray. Also, the SD card is kind of hiding away in the back under the filament in the shadows. It's really hard to get at. And I was able to get an extension and move that out so that I could access the SD card in front. That helped a lot. In fact, overall, I would say any major problem that you have with this 3D printer can be upgraded away, but it's kind of frustrating that those upgrades are necessary in the first place. Still, I can't deny that, especially on this project where every part that was 3D printed was 3D printed on the LK5 Pro, it succeeded brilliantly. It did a great job.